Hey guys, so um, uh, please don't mind my hair. I actually have it out now, so uh, it's uh, in a scarf to make sure it doesn't go everywhere. Um, I actually kind of um wanted to I just warn you that this post gets kind of pretty heavy, um, pretty serious, pretty dark, really quickly. Um, and I kind of guess it goes with why I started the vlog in the first place and I guess the, I guess the start at the beginning. So when I first really started this channel, my whole hope was that I would really kind of share parts of myself that I haven't shared with my friends. Not just parts of myself, but like share, um, you know, things that kind of really went on in my mind and how I thought and, and you know, what got me here and stuff like that. And I think... As important as those stories are, I also should really talk about what almost didn't get me here. And uh, I know a lot of you know that I'm like uber obsessed with going to Canada and moving there and living there and all of those things and becoming naturalized. And I still am. I mean, even though I'm moving to Ohio, I still am ever, as ever, you know, obsessed as ever with going there. I'm sorry, it is like four in the morning. But I wanted to explain. A little bit of what it meant and what Canada means to me um, Canada Day is actually July 1st which I believe is um, it's like a Wednesday or something it's like a Tuesday or it's well, I'm sorry it's like Wednesday or something um, and I really kind of wanted <sighs> so sorry I really kind of wanted people to um, kind of um, understand what it means to me and really when I talk about Canada the kind of place it has in my personal narrative um, so a lot of people may or may not well I know some of my closest friends know this some of them don't because I don't really talk about it very much um, but I used to be very it's weird I practice this but I know it's not going to get any easier when I actually say it because that means now more people know and it, it kind of makes me a little vulnerable. But I think the whole point of these vlogs is to kind of show you that side of myself. So here goes. Um, for, uh, I want to say the first 20 years of my life. Um, uh, first 19, 20 years. Um, I was very uh, depressed and uh, suicidal. Um, and what that means, I mean you can kind of look that up I mean um, I've had a couple of times where I've tried to uh, you know commit suicide um, ever since I was a little kid and this isn't really that video the video where I really discuss all of my like all the attempts that I can remember because it's been it was a lot it was it was a whole fucking lot um but um, so, what what does that mean? Um, I guess I'll touch on a couple things. So whenever I talk about like, oh, I felt kind of this darkness, or I felt kind of, that I've mentioned in other vlogs, it was like a dark time in my life. It was really the time when my attempts were really high, like where I was really trying to kill myself on a very frequent basis. Um, and you may say, where does Canada come in? Don't worry, I get there all the time. Don't worry, I'll get, the, you know my story's around about, I'm gonna get there. So I had, and I feel bad for my friends because I love my friends and everything, but I had always been very depressed and very upset and very sad. And even though, I mean, I love my friends, I swear to God, you guys are amazing. Being with them was great, but then when they weren't around, it was just really sad. Um, it was really bad. It wasn't, um, life just wasn't what I was expecting it to be when I was a little kid. I was just really upset at everything, and I just felt like maybe things would be better if I wasn't around, um, ever. And so, sorry, um, I had started, um, trying, um, to kill myself, and I used to cut, um, a lot, but like I said, that's not the whole point of the story. So. When I was uh, 19, the year I was 19, I was like, I think I was turning 20 that year. 
I um, hadn't seen my friends in a while. We hadn't spoken to each other very much, and we hadn't really seen each other. And I went to college, and I just things just weren't going my way. Like it was beyond clinical depression. I was angry every day. I was always upset. I mean, nothing could make me happy. And um, so one night I tried to take a bunch of pills and I just I just cried and just thought I was just like this pathetic fucking loser that had nothing to offer the world. And I was just like I was I was like oh my god you're so fucking stupid you can't even like kill yourself properly. And I went to cry myself to sleep, and I just stayed home for a few weeks from school. And nobody really noticed at home. It was weird, but um, people at my school noticed. And uh, they forced me to go to therapy when I was in college. Um, shout out to them. Thank God, literally. Um, and so that was a really great experience because I actually went to therapy um, for a year. Yeah, I'm sorry. I went to therapy for a year, and toward the end of that, um, my therapist was like, well, you know, why don't you do something for you, and all those other things, and I went, you know, I've always wanted to go on a vacation, and so I kind of, you know, I wanted to do that, but a lot of my friends, you know, my closest friends, even though I love them to death, it, 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 when I tried to plan the vacation with them, it just made, it was just hard because they all wanted to do something specific and spend a lot of money and do a lot of stuff that I was just like, I can't do. Like, oh, we should get a package and we should do this and we've got to stay in expensive hotels and and this and that and, and pretty much be chauffeured and, and like, watched everywhere we go. I'm like, I don't want that kind of vacation experience. I want to see a city for how it actually is. I don't want to go oh, let's look at this monument thing, and then let's move on. And, and that's the kind of thing that they were interested in. And I was very upset. I was very, very dismayed. And then I had um, one friend who was on campus with me named January, and she's awesome. She is and she was, so or she was and she is. And she was also an English major, just like me, and she lived upstate. So she's like, you know, I go upstate all the time, so I'll go to Canada with you. And then when we come back down, I'll just stop where my, you know, where my, you know, where my town is, and I'll just get off and whatever. And I was like, oh my god, are you serious? This is really fucking happening? This is really happening? And I was like, this is amazing. It was just, I was just so happy. And we stayed in this great, tiny little place, and... I was I wasn't even there for like a week. But when I, I first place I got was Montreal. It was great. That was the first place I ever went when I went to Canada. And I think Toronto is definitely another episode. Probably next year's Canada Day, but Montreal was the first place in Canada I'd ever gone. And so you know we got there, and as we were crossing the border, I was just like something. I just I don't know. I just felt a little different. And then it hit me like when we got off the train. It was like seven o'clock at night, mind you. It was like seven or eight. It was not a.m. at all. But when I got there, I don't know, but I felt like it was the first time I'd ever, I know this sounds so lame, um, it was the first time I'd ever really, like, felt, like, you know that feeling when the sun rises and when you know everything's going to be okay and, like, you really feel like something different's happening and your, and your life is changing? Like, that's how I felt. I felt like my life changed when I went there. I felt like I'd finally done something for me and despite any financial obstacles because I didn't really have a job that semester um, and I didn't have a lot of money but despite financial obstacles I was able to make it there and I was able to be there with my friend and have this great new experience and I was just I, I'm telling you I, I felt like I had never compared to how I felt even my happiest moments in the US before I, before I went on that vacation with nothing I mean they were like candles compared to the sun literally I just felt like I had only had these little flickers of happiness but they were just there was just so much sadness involved but when I got there I felt like a weight lifted off of me because I used to just think the worst about myself I would just tell myself the worst things and I would treat myself horribly and I was and you should never do that like I I love myself so much now but then I just 
I didn't, I couldn't, I just, part of me just couldn't love myself, and I just, I'm sorry about looking at the camera, but I can't right now, but, um, I just, it was so beautiful, I'm still thinking about it, in my suitcase, and me and, Janu and me and January are walking down the strip trying to find our place, and looking past all these people, I'm like, oh my god, I'm here, and I don't know what this feels like, but I really fucking like it, and it was so fun so beautiful there it's so it's still so beautiful because it's still there but I see it in my head I see it in my camera I see it in the faces of all the people I met and I see it in like we got caught in this rainstorm and I see it in the rainstorm and I see it in the bakery and I see it in the convenience store guy and, and I just I saw something that I had never thought I'd see and I felt so happy and it was the kind of happy that I felt like was never going away. And I just felt like I'm never going to, I'm, I've, I feel, I feel like I had a goal in life now. I felt like this is how I want to feel all the time. I never want to go back to feeling how I felt for the past 20 years. I, I hated that feeling. And I was like, no, I'm never going to feel like that again. Because every time I feel like that, I know I'm going to have somewhere to go. I know I'm going to have somewhere to be comfortable and that I'm going to love and Every day was amazing. We were there for like almost a week. Every day was amazing. No, I mean, even when it rained, it was amazing. I mean, everything was just perfect. Everything. I can't, you know, it's funny. I can't even think of any bad experiences that happened. Everything was great. Every, every interaction, every conversation. I mean, and I felt like I got to talk to people. And really, I was very happy. I was just, oh my God. The joy I experienced in that week was no offense to my friends like I said I love you but it was nothing compared to what I experienced in the past 20 years it was it, ch it changed my life I don't even feel it didn't I don't, I don't feel like I changed my life it actually changed my life and then I don't know if I decided there when I came back I, I never I never tried to I never even thought about killing myself ever again I mean I've been depressed and I've just been like for me, depression is, is very difficult to deal with, and that's definitely another video, too, because this is really my focus on, on Canada and how amazing and perfect it was for me and my experiences. But I, I haven't, and it's been like seven years since I went to Montreal, and it's been, I can't even remember, I want to say three, no, it's been like two years since I went to Toronto. And I definitely want to go to other parts, too. I've been in Niagara, but whatever, it's a town. But, like, um, that was amazing, too. Oh, my God. Like, everything. But, so, like, like, that was my, like, first, you know, trip. That was, like, me, you know, just, I don't know. And, and I do want to tell you guys, I don't want you to think, oh, I went there and I was magically cured. No, I mean, I still, I still have, you know, I don't want to say dark thoughts because they're nothing like what I felt before I left, but... I still feel sad, I still feel depressed, I still get upset, I still feel lonely, of course I still feel those things, but, like, you know, and suicidal thoughts are things that don't really go away, but whenever I think that creeps up into me, I think about Canada, and I think about, I really loved that experience, I know people say, oh, it's different when you move there, I'm like, but that's what I want, I want to permanently feel this, this, oh my god, the sun is rising, oh my god, I don't feel like a horrible person, I just... If I could explain to you how I felt before I went there and how I feel now, I'm, I feel like I'm a different person. I'm complete. I know I am. I know I'm a different person. When I came back, everything changed. I mean, for the better, I did so much of my life since then. And I realized now, had I stayed the way I was and had I not changed, and I'd probably be dead. I wouldn't be alive to do any of the awesome stuff I want to tell you guys I, I have plans to do and and to talk about disability rights and to you know to live the you know this kind of beautiful life of service and helping other people because I couldn't help myself for so long it was so bad it was so hard and then when, I don't know when I just got there I just felt better and then when I went to Toronto I'll get more into that but it, it reaffirmed my belief and my idea and my feeling about wanting to move and so you know shout out to everybody up there <laughs> happy Canada Day but I kind of really wanted to finally explain to my friends um what Canada really means to me and and how deep and how psychological and emotionally attached I am to moving and to really contributing to kind of 
um, that society in the sense of understanding and coalition building when it comes to disability and really learning what I've learned here and really implementing it wherever I go. So I'm, I'm not just going to obviously wait to go to Canada and implement any ideas I have about disability rights or programs I want to do. I'm definitely starting here, but I really want to end up there. Um, and it's, I'm telling you guys, I wish you could see, I mean, I, I kind of don't wish you could see me then because I used to have marks all over my hands and stuff and, and my body where I used to like, um, like self-harm and stuff, but I just, ugh, I just, ugh, oh Canada, <laughs> um, but I just really wanted to kind of tell you guys and really kind of get to the heart of my, um, my, I, I guess some people call it an obsession, my obsession and my love for the idea of moving, um, and not that I don't love the U.S., but I think that, and I've been to so many other countries. No other country has done that for me ever in my entire life. No other country has ever made me feel that way. And if somebody, if you ever go to a country and it makes you feel the way I felt, you should work on going there and staying there and living there and experiencing that for the rest of your life. Because nobody deserves to feel how I felt when I was younger. Nobody deserves to feel that for 20 years or even 20 seconds. Everybody deserves to be as happy as they can be. And if that includes moving and uprooting your life and, and going somewhere that makes you happy, be that, you know, do that, be that as it may, or whatever the term is, please just go there and be happy and, and love your life. Um, because I love mine now. And I one of the really main things is because I think about Canada. I think about moving. I think about contributing to society and and, you know, making some people or some organization or whatever as happy as being there around those people have made me so i will see you guys next week with hopefully a, a lighter story where i'm not crying all over the place and stuff but um i just want to tell you that so have a good night guys or good morning or whenever you're watching it's good afternoon bye